Many of us in gardening have similar problems. Same problem that your neighbor has right down the street. And if you're growing apple trees or pears or roses, in some cases you might be experiencing disease problems. Could be bacterial, could be a fungus, or could even be a virus. But throughout the year, if you're finding dead parts of your plant on your, let's say for example here, this heirloom apple, you can prune out the dead portions. But it is important to follow a couple rules. First of all, to find out if that portion is truly dead, take a little pen knife or a paring knife, and you're gonna scratch the bark. And here, the bark is brown. When you get up into this portion of your bark, it's nice and green. So what you can do is prune out that dead portion. So just come in with a good shears, and you really want to prune to a bud, to a branch, and in many cases prune up to eight inches even below where the bark is dead. In this case, I'm going to prune about three inches below. I'm going to prune to another side branch. And so what I've done is remove this portion, which is partially dead, and I can go through this whole apple tree and remove any dead branches any time of the year. Fire blight is very common in pears. It also can happen in crab apples and apples and a few other trees. This is where it looks like the leaves have been torched, where someone took a flamethrower and burned the leaves. In fact, on pears, the leaves are entirely black. But the thing with fire blight is the leaves hang down and really don't fall off the tree for quite some time. So you can go in throughout the year and prune out and you want to come about 8, 10 inches below the burned leaves to a bud or a branch or in this case here on this crab apple just come right there to that point or I might even come a little further like this because fire blight can get inside the tissue and the stems of your tree and that can give you future problems. And I'm going to give you the best tip right now. When you make a cut, for example, on this rose, you then will take your tool, if you're going to another plant, and you tip, dip your tool, and then you might dry it off or you let the sun dry it quickly. That helps prevent you from spreading a disease to another plant. The same thing is true for your big lopper. But again, if you keep them in there too long, they're gonna rust. One thing you need to keep in mind that has changed over the past couple of years. Bleach was available in a concentrated form rather recently, and in the past, bleach was available in the normal formula of 2.75%, almost 3%. Now, it's 8.75%, so it's almost three times stronger. The key to having your bleach destroy viruses and bacteria and fungi is it can't be too strong. So what you're going to want to do is take one part of the concentrated bleach now and to that you're going to add 30 parts water. Some people also use bleach to spray plants at a much more diluted rate. You got to remember if you're reading old literature, the new literature shows that you need to really cut down your bleach with extra water. Last thing, roses. Again, one of my favorites, easy, carefree rose. If you forgot to prune it, again, you're going to want to go through and below where any dead or dieback is occurring, you're going to prune it. So I'm going to come in right here like this and prune two or three inches below and get rid of the old or possibly diseased. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time in the garden. For more garden tips, go to IndaGardenRadio.com.